on a warm summer day in the Lumbridge Market, a new player is ready to start their PVM adventure. Wow, I finally got all 80 combat skills. <laughs> Only level 80s? <laughs> Get good, kid. <laughs> Don't listen to him, man. Congrats, brother. That's awesome. Thanks, man. I think I'm ready to get into PVM now. Heck yeah, man. Make that money. But I got a slight problem. What? What's wrong, man? I really don't understand these ability thingies. Uh, well, what combat style are you trying to learn? I think I would really enjoy learning the melee. Ha, well, that's awesome, man. I have the perfect PVM video for you. Woohoo! Let's go! <laughs> Yo, what is up, everyone? Welcome back to the channel. I know it's been a while since I've uploaded, but I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. And today, I'm bringing you the PVM Ability Breakdown Melee Edition. I'd even call it the Ultimate Melee Edition, because throughout this video, I'm going to cover every ability for melee there is. So stick tuned, if you guys are new to PVM, this will be super helpful for you guys in learning how to actually get into PVM, what abilities are, and how to just get better at PVM in general. So if you guys are new here, make sure you subscribe, leave a like, and without further ado, let's get into this video. A quick disclaimer for you guys, I don't know everything about PVM, just a decent understanding. With that being said, if there's an ability that I didn't explain the best or kind of messed up, just take advantage of the comment section. Let me know what I explained poorly, what I could have explained better, or even what I explained well, um, and things that helped you out. So with the disclaimer out of the way, let's actually get into this video. So starting off, if you're going to get into the abilities for melee, you have to understand what a basic ability is. So a basic ability is going to grant you 8% adrenaline, possibly more depending on specific relics that you have activated, which you unlock through archaeology. But each time you use or use a certain basic ability, it will increase your damage, possibly adding a special effect or could do both. And on the screen I have all the basic abilities for melee and let's go ahead and talk about each specific basic ability in depth. So the first basic ability that we have is Slice. Now the way they descripted Slice is Slice at the target's weak point. Love it, you gotta draw that visual. But it does do 30% to 120% ability damage. Now however this is increased if the target is bound and stunned which will then allow it to cause 80% to 146% ability damage. Now this ability is a little weaker than more of the other abilities, so you'd prioritize this one less, but it's good to understand that if a target is stunned, then maybe you do use slice over another ability because the damage would be increased. The next basic ability that we have is backhand. Now the visual for this one is strike the target with the back of the hand. You know, you gotta give them that little discipline you know and that will deal 20% to 100% ability damage and it will stun the target for about 1.2 seconds now this is good because when you stun the target then how you would use the slice ability dealing that increased damage so backhand also a little bit of weaker ability so you wouldn't prioritize that but it's good to understand that with this ability you will be able to stun the target the next basic ability is Havoc. Now this is only for people who are using dual wield weapons. They can use this um, Havoc ability, but you will strike the target with both weapons. This will deal 31% to 157% ability damage. And if you're in a PvP situation, it will disable uh, protection prayers off your target. So if you're in the wilderness and someone's trying to ruffle you up a bit, say nah nah nah, Havoc ain't got no protection and then you spec them they're done easy clap havoc is a little bit stronger ability than the other two we've discussed so far the next basic ability is barge other known as greater barge when you unlock the ability which you get from the greater barge ability codex now in green text i have what the greater adds to the original basic um so we'll read on here 
the original barge allows you to run up and ram the target doing 25 percent to 125 percent ability damage this also allows you to move one tile from your target so if you're in a situation where you need to move around a lot you can change your target use barge and you can get out of that situation the greater and <laughs> that gets added to the barge gains 10 percent damage for every 0.6 seconds up to six seconds since your last attack so basically you'll be doing more damage um, to your targets and if it has been 4.8 seconds since your last attack grants you additional bonus with your next turn basically allowing you to make your next attack a channeled ability and damage over time which is going to do way more damage than if you only had the regular barge so this would be a basic that you'd want to prioritize when doing pvm and to top it all off it clears any bound statuses that you have to yourself and will bind the target for 6.6 .6 seconds so really really good ability um, you would prioritize this one over the other ones especially if you have the greater version so the next ability we have is sever with this ability you'll be striking at the target's vitals Oof, so gives me chills reading that one but you will do 37 percent to 188 percent ability damage now on top of that targets deals 10% less damage for 4.8 seconds so this is a good way to kind of save you a little bit of food if you prioritize this one it's a stronger ability than some of the other ones we've talked about and for five seconds you're taking less damage and that's a dub we don't want to take damage save resources make more money <laughs> So our next basic ability is Bladed Dive. This is another dual wield weapon only ability. Unless you have Laceration Boots, then you're able to use a two hand weapon while using it. Now when activating Bladed Dive, you will dash forward, striking the enemies around you, dealing 25% to 125% ability damage. Now, this isn't a super strong ability. However, it lets you move to a selected tile. So if you click anywhere in like your range of your character, you go there instantly. So it's super good to get around the map. And if you kill an enemy, uh, when you blade a dive to the tile that you click on, it instantly cools your bladed dive and you're able to use it again. So you can get around and super good at like Raksha and things of that nature. And you're able to damage nine targets in your direction and this ability cannot be used on revo so this is something you'll have to activate manually but it's super good situational and it's also super good just to get around the map when you're doing like clues or just trying to quest get around faster so our next basic ability is kick the description for that is kick the target causing them to stumble and you'll be able to deal 20 percent to 100 percent ability damage now there are stronger basics out there but this one does also allow you to stun the target for 1.2 seconds and if they're a smaller target you knock them back a tile so you create a little bit of space um, so it's not a crazy ability um, you wouldn't necessarily prioritize this but if you need a stun for certain situations kick is a good option our next basic ability is punish and the description for that is slash at your target <laughs> and that will deal 18% to 94% ability damage this is our weakest uh, ability that we have touched on so far but if the target is bound and they are stunned it will deal up to 37% to 188% ability damage so if they're stunned this could be prioritized over some basic abilities however it's always about the situation of what you have on cooldown and how you have in your rotations and i'm not going too deep on rotations in this video i will have another one going in on that so make sure you guys subscribe so you can see all of the rotations and different ways you would incorporate these abilities um, but this is mainly just breaking them down helping you guys understand what they are and then in future videos we'll talk about all that fun stuff the next basic ability is dismember and the description for that is slice at the target causing them to bleed yeah bleed bleeds melee is all about bleeds um at least that's what i hear i'm not a melee escaper myself but i just know that bleeds are so important and this ability will deal 20 percent to 37 percent ability damage every 1.2 seconds over the span of six seconds now this is our first damage over time ability unless you use greater barge to turn it into a damage over time ability but this is super good because you're dealing that amount of damage every 1.2 seconds for six seconds so 
more like i don't know the math on that but you're dealing like a lot more damage with this basic ability than probably all of our other basic abilities we talked about other than a few so definitely prioritize dismember our next basic ability is greater fury other known as fury if you don't have the unlock and to unlock greater fury you will use yes you guys guessed it the greater fury codex <laughs> the description for this one is striking at your target with rage with freaking rage and this will deal 31 percent to 157 percent ability damage now i did put in green text what the regular fury does um, i switched it up on this one just because the regular and the greater fury are completely different um, so greater fury is definitely something i'd recommend it will make it one of your strongest basic abilities in melee but this will also gain you 10 percent increased critical strike chance for your next ability so critical strikes is basically like you're critting i'm sure you guys have heard that so you definitely want to use this followed by a super strong ability allowing you to crit and do more damage to your targets when you're doing pvm it also gains a hundred percent critical strike chance for the next ability if your greater fury strike crits so if you do crit with this ability then you use a strong ability after it's a hundred percent you're going to crit again so yeah definitely a super strong ability the basic um, Fury does more damage, but it's like 2.4 seconds. You hit three times. You have a 48% to 246% total ability damage in that span. So it is a little stronger. However, the added uh, special attack to the Greater Fury makes Greater Fury so much better. Our next basic ability is Decimate. And the description for that is striking at the target with both weapons. So with that description alone, you already know this is just a dual wield ability however it does deal 37 percent to 188 percent ability damage so definitely one of the stronger basics we touched on so far but if you're in a pvp situation and however you know they're just chilling there with a shield yeah if they have a shield then you're going to be dealing 48 percent to 244 percent ability damage so definitely prioritize this ability especially if you're in the wilderness and they got a shield you know, catch them slacking, catch them slacking. Our next basic ability is cleave. The description for this is swipe your weapon in front of you. Yeah, like tender, you know, just swiping. And this is only a two-handed weapon ability. So this will allow you to do 37% to 188% ability damage. Definitely a strong two-handed weapon ability. I would prioritize this over most of the abilities we touched on so far if you're using two-handed and you damage up to nine targets in front of you so aoe being able to damage more targets and it's a strong basic we like cleave we like those now the last basic that we're going to touch on is smash this one also is a two-handed weapon only and you will be able to deliver a powerful blow to the target dealing 31 percent to 157 percent ability damage now just like one of the other basics we talked about before this will also disable protection prayers on targets in pvp situations now I did, before making this video i didn't really know that there was like a lot of abilities that can take off protection prayers in a pvp situation so if you get stuck in the wilderness definitely utilize smash and some of the other basics that we talked about so far and it does a good amount of damage in comparison to like kick or punish or things of that nature now that we've covered all the basic abilities, let's talk about threshold abilities. What's a threshold? Well, hey, let me tell you. Threshold abilities require 50% adrenaline to be able to be activated, but they do come at a cost of 15% adrenaline. Now, generally, these deal more damage than your basic abilities and have stronger effects. So whether those effects are a better bleed, better crit chance, or just dealing more damage, you're going to want to prioritize your threshold abilities when you're trying to do DPS, cause damage, kill things faster. With all that being said, for our first threshold ability, Slaughter, the description for this one is stab the target causing them to bleed. We like bleeds, we like those. And this one does 20% to 50% ability damage 
every 1.2 seconds over six seconds. So this is another damage over time ability, but the thing that makes Slaughter special is it deals three times damage if the target's moving. So this is where you would utilize one of those basics that we talked about, either bladed dive or greater barge to a different target to cause the one target you did use Slaughter on to start moving around doing that extra DPS. For our next threshold ability, we have forceful backhand. The description for this is slap the target with the back of the hand, you know, nothing like some good old discipline. Similar to the basic ability backhand, except this one is a little bit more stronger and the stun is longer. The damage is 40% to 200% ability damage and the stun is 3.6 seconds. So if you need a stun given the right circumstances, I would use forceful backhand. Definitely a great threshold. For our next threshold ability, we have Greater Flurry or the Flurry ability. Now the Greater version is unlocked by, if you would have never guessed this, the Greater Flurry ability codex. And the Greater Flurry is just slightly better than its predecessor. This ability will be swinging both weapons rapidly around you, dealing 75% to 376% total ability damage over 3.6 seconds in four hits. I know that was a lot right there to kind of get out in all those words, but it's a super strong threshold. And if you strike a single target with the greater version, it deals 125% to 628% total ability damage instead. And it's a channeled attack. So basically, if you're in a situation where you're fighting an individual boss, you would definitely want to prioritize greater flurry when using dual wield uh, uh, weapons. Also, for every successful hit, gains you 1.2 second cooldown reduction from Berserk up to a maximum of about 5 seconds. We haven't talked about it, but Berserk is usually your prioritized ultimate when using melee, and we'll talk about that later in the video. And to top all off, this is an AoE ability, so you damage up to 8 additional targets when using this ability. Super great threshold, like I said, the greater version is definitely stronger than the original and I would prioritize this one. For our next threshold ability is Blood Tendrils and this one's unlocked by the Codex Ultimatums that you get through a dig site quest. The description for this is summon tendrils to attack the target causing them to, oh my god you guys guessed it, to bleed. We love bleeds, we love those and this one does 18% to 90% ability damage every 1.2 seconds for 6 seconds. Another damage over a time ability and the initial hit is twice as strong. The only downside to blood tendrils is that you damage yourself for 27% of the damage dealt after the initial hit. So you do get some recoil from using this but it is a strong threshold. Not necessarily the one you should prioritize but you should work that into your rotation. For our next threshold ability, we have Stomp. The description is kick the target, causing them to stumble, and this is basically the upgraded version of kick, if you will. The damage is 40% to 200% ability damage, the stun being 3.6 seconds, and the knockback is the same as kick, which knocks a smaller target back one tile, creating that space. Now, I wouldn't necessarily prioritize Stomp because it's not as strong as some of the other threshold abilities, but if you're in a situation where you need a stun and you have the adrenaline, Stomp is a great option. For our next threshold ability, we have Destroy, which the description for this one is ferociously attack with both weapons. This is a dual wield weapon uh, threshold only, but you will be dealing up to 148% to 752% total ability damage over the span of 4.2 seconds in 4 hits. This is a channeled attack and with an added benefit stuns the target for 3.6 seconds. This is definitely a strong threshold that I'd prioritize. Not only do you get a lot of damage um, output, but you also have a chance to stun the enemy. So super strong threshold, I would prioritize it. For our next threshold ability, we have Assault. Strike at the target multiple times. This will be dealing up to 172% to 876% total ability damage over 5.4 seconds and four hits. Just like Destroyed, this is a channeled attack and you have a higher window to cause more total ability damage. So I definitely would prioritize this over Destroy, but then if available, I would Destroy right after Assault. Definitely will allow you to cause a lot of damage, a lot of DPS increase, and kill your targets faster. 
for our next threshold ability, we have Quake, which is our first two-handed only threshold. The description for this is slam the ground with your weapon, which will be causing 43% to 219% ability damage to the primary target. And it is an AOE ability, so for all the other surrounding targets, you'll be causing 37 to 188% ability damage. Now, every target that's damaged, they'll get a defense reduction by 5% and increase base hit chance on damaged targets by 2%. So basically you'll have more opportunities to hit harder hits to the enemies that get affected by Quake, and you'll be dealing more damage because their defense has dropped by 5%. Quake is definitely a good threshold, and I would prioritize this one as well. And for our final threshold ability, we have Hurricane. This one, just like Quake, is a two-handed only threshold, but you'll be able to cause 66% to 219% ability damage and your second attack will cause 84% to 161% ability damage to your primary target. So this just like Quake is an AOE ability so you can hit up to 8 targets around your attack radius but it is a strong ability because it allows you to hit multiple times in a quick um, short amount of time dealing high amounts of damage. Definitely a good threshold. I wouldn't necessarily prioritize Hurricane over all of the thresholds that we talked about, but it is somewhere I'd work kind of in the middle if you have the adrenaline for it. Now that we have covered all the threshold abilities, it's time to talk about the ultimate abilities. What's an ultimate ability? I'm gonna go ahead and tell you. Ultimates typically require 100% adrenaline and drain the whole bar. So you're gonna be completely out of adrenaline, but you deal a large amount of damage and provides a very, very powerful effect. So these ultimate abilities are something you wanna build up your adrenaline to, activate the ultimate and then once you're in your ultimate or using it you'll want to utilize your thresholds to optimize your dps and again if something's not making sense to you guys i know i've kind of just been hitting you with a lot of facts make sure you ask down in the comment section i'll be answering every comment and hopefully i can help you out with any confusion that you may have throughout the video for our very first ultimate ability, we're going to talk about Overpowered. Now, Overpowered strikes the target with a massive overhead swing, causing 200% to 400% ability damage. Again, when using ultimates, it drains your whole uh, adrenaline bar, so you don't necessarily want to utilize Overpowered over some of the other ultimate abilities because you get no real benefit other than the damage. For our next ultimate ability, we have Massacre, which is a dual wield weapon uh, ultimate only. You swing both weapons at the target, causing them to <laughs> bleed. You know, like I said throughout this video, we love bleeds. This will cause 37% to 188% additional ability damage, and followed by a 62% ability damage every 1.2 seconds over 6 seconds. So it is a damage over time, causing a bleed. If you have weapons that causes your bleeds to do more damage massacre is definitely a good option to utilize your adrenaline especially you have way more adrenaline than you need so massacre is a good ultimate ability given the right situation for our next ultimate ability we have balance strike and i'll go ahead and be honest with you guys i don't really know where and when you'd utilize this um ultimate ability so if you could in the comment section below let me know but basically you attack with the power of gothics target or user with the highest percentage remaining life points will be able to deal damage equal to the percent um difference of the user's maximum life points so basically if there's a huge difference between the life points you will deal that amount of damage to the target dealing a lot of damage the other will heal for 50 percent of the damage dealt this is unlocked by the World Awakes quest, and like I said, if you guys can let me know when this would be utilized, I'd love to know, but I wouldn't personally use this ultimate ability ever, but I could be, I don't want to get murdered in the comment section, but I just don't know when you would use this. For our bread and butter ultimate ability, we have Berserk. Now, Berserk's going to be the ultimate ability that you're going to use 99% of the time. Now, the description for this is Go Berserk, empowering yourself. This will increase your melee damage by 100%. However, you do increase the damage you take by 50%, but you're dealing 100% more damage on top of everything. So your bleed stack, 
you know, if you have a bleed stack going or you're critting, it's going to do 100% more damage than it would have done if you weren't in Berserk. This does last 19.8 seconds, so Berserk is super powerful. And if you utilize this with Greater Flurry, like we talked about before, your cooldown comes down quicker so you can get back into your Berserk again, allowing you to do more damage, kill your targets faster, more DPS. Life's great. So Berserk, definitely the ultimate ability I would prioritize. For our next ultimate ability, we have Frenzy. Now, Frenzy is a two-handed only um, ultimate ability, and the description is swinging your weapon in a Frenzy, causing 380% to 840% total ability damage over 4.8 seconds in four hits. So this is a channeled ability, and it's honestly super strong. You do do a lot of damage within those 4.8 seconds in those four hits. I don't necessarily think I would utilize this over Massacre because you don't get a bleed stack with it. But if Massacre wasn't available and you were in Zerk, I would definitely use Frenzy given the right amount of adrenaline at the right time. For our next ultimate ability, we have Pulverize. Charge up a massive strike and pulverize the target. This is a two hand only ultimate ability, but you will be able to deal 250% to 350% ability damage. Now, this also reduces the damage dealt by the target by 25% for 30 seconds. And if an NPC is defeated, when you use Pulverize, you gain 50% adrenaline. So if you had a lot of adrenaline and you're about to kill a target, it'd be probably ideal for you to go ahead and use Pulverize because you get 50% adrenaline back and you also get that damage reduction by 25% for 30 seconds so it's really situational um, with most ultimates um, but pulverize is a good two-handed ultimate I just wouldn't use that over berserk of course and for our final ultimate ability we have meteor strike jump up and strike the ground we have a two-handed only ultimate ability but this will allow you to deal 250% to 350% ability damage. And not only are you going to damage your primary target, but you are going to damage up to eight other enemies. So look at that. AOE abilities, we like that. And on top of that, any critical strike that you get for 30 seconds, you'll gain 10% extra adrenaline. So given the right parameters and the right adrenaline, obviously you utilize Berserk always. But Meteor Strike could come in really clutch for you to have that extra adrenaline to activate more thresholds within that Berserk if you had a surplus of adrenaline. So wouldn't say it's the best ultimate, but it's definitely in the top three for melee. And I would think about trying to work that into your rotation. Now that we've covered basic, threshold, and ultimate abilities for melee, you guys should have a really good understanding of what abilities are what and what they do. But you may be asking yourself, well now that I know all of this, how do I use the abilities and what order do I use them? I know what they do, but is there a specific order? There is to maximize your DPS given the right circumstances, but what I've done is I went ahead and pulled a few action bars from the wiki. If you guys don't know, the wiki is a fantastic source. Um, but I did pull a few action bars given like what you have unlocked for dual wield and two handed. So the first slide I have up is the dual wield, which if you don't have any unlocks, you'd use that first bar there at the top. That way you can set it up, put it on revel, and at least you're doing a decent amount of damage. Not the optimal DPS rotation, but it's something to start if you have no action bar set up for you. The second one, we have Blood Tentacles, if you have that unlocked from the Dig Site Quest. It's kind of where you would incorporate that into your bar, and again, you can set this on Revo. It will do more damage than the previous bar, um, just given that you added a good threshold in there, but it's not gonna be optimal DPS. And the third action bar is if you have Greater Fury and Blood Tentacles unlocked, you'd put those both on the bar, kind of like you see, and it will allow you to do even more damage than the two bars before. Again, this isn't optimal DPS, this is just a base rotation that you can put on Revo and allow it to do its thing. Um, and like I said, in the future we'll be doing the actual DPS rotations. I just wanted to cover all the basics, ultimates, thresholds, all the abilities. That way you guys understand what they do. And so that way when I make the rotation video, you can kind of understand why you would rotate it in that specific way to allow you to do more damage. Here I'll go ahead and pull up if you are using a two hand bar. Again, the top bar is if you have no unlocks at all, 
So if you have zero of the unlocks, then you would go ahead and use that top bar. If you had only blood tentacles unlocked, you'd use the second bar. And if you had gr only greater fury unlocked, you'd use the third bar. Now the bottom bar, again, is if you have both of those unlocked. That would be the best out of the four bars that we have here and when it comes to DPS on Revo. However, again, not optimal DPS. So I didn't want to leave you guys high and dry with no um, action bar that you could set up. So I did include those here at the end. But I believe we're wrapping this up. And that is it for the video everyone. If you made it this far, you are a real one and I hope you guys are melee experts when it comes to the abilities. Like I said, this is the ultimate ability breakdown melee edition. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know in the comments down below if it helped you any and what you'd like to see next on the channel. I will be coming out with a range and a magic ability breakdown guide in the weeks to come. And then I also will be doing the DPS rotations after all the abilities have been covered and I've helped you guys master your PVM abilities. So with all that being said, again, I appreciate you guys. Make sure you leave a like, subscribe, and comment down below. And I am out of here. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.